Every year, billions of dollars are spent creating just the type of fantasy that more than a few of us enjoy. From movies to video games and even fantasy football, we are quite literally addicted to checking out from reality. And while fantasy can be fun and many times a healthy diversion in times of high stress, there can be a downside as well. And that's when we get so locked in the fantasy that we stop living in reality and live in a world of hopes and dreams. Hi, this is Denise Matthew and welcome to today's topic of discussion. The Gate 41, also called the Gate of Fantasy. An interesting fact about the Gate 41 is that if you were born between the years 1996 and 2002, there's a good chance that you have the Gate 41 defined in your body graph, since both Neptune and Uranus transited through the Gate 41 during those years. Of course you don't need to have been born in that time frame to have the Gate defined, since there are many planets moving all the time that can define the Gate 41. But what it does say is that there are a lot more people with the Gate 41 around now than there normally would be based on the transits. And even if you don't have this Gate defined, it doesn't mean that you don't like being swept away on a cloud of fantasy. When we talk about the fantasy of the Gate 41, we're talking about something that can be extremely powerful and focused. And for that reason, it can also be a place in our lives where we trip up and instead of being in the world, we live instead on the periphery of life where our dreams become our virtual reality. It can be about living inside a world of our creation where nothing in the manifest world happens because we're locked in our own private program and the only way to escape this program is to bring our feet back to earth. No time in history has ever catered so much to our fantasies and our dreams than right now. And even if the illusions of the perfect life are fake, we still want to believe in the reality where we have all the money, beauty, perfect love partners, and where we win the lottery or we're discovered for that thing that makes us so special. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of the most innovative and pioneering people in the world have this energy in their design. There's no doubting that it's powerful stuff. And the question is, what's the difference between them and us? And how do we get on the path that will see our lives fulfilled and our dreams manifest. Found in the root center, the gate 41 is special in that it's called an initiator codon. It begins all the processes and because of that, it's considered initiating energy that ultimately brings new ideas or experiences into form. And the dreams that come out of this energy are not your run of the mill dreams. They're instead powerful and vivid and they can empower others to believe in your dreams as well but only if the timing is right. This is a kind of energy that can be looking at every conceivable possibility from every angle to find the missing experience that will bring them a sense of wholeness and completion with the hope that it will fill the emptiness that haunts them. This hunger to fill the void can cause people to try to fill the space they feel inside with food, sex, or anything that bridges the gap that grows every day, showing them that their dreams have not yet manifest. And when they've theoretically filled that void, there can be an alternative sense of heaviness and all they want to do is feel lighter. This energy can also be about combing through the past only to be followed by a leap into the future where all the supposed good things in life exist. In its lowest expression, there can be a sense of being so lost in the dream that nothing outside of your dreams matter and nothing ever gets started. The perceived life and the dreams can become all that exists and anything outside of them is not considered important. This can be the dreamer who never wakes up to go outside and make their dreams a reality. Alternatively, there can be a hyper focus on the manifestation of their dreams and only exactly what they envision will suffice and anything that doesn't get them closer to the dreamt future doesn't really matter. There can be addictions to fantasies of all kinds video games, movie heroes, magical worlds, any place where the magic is abundant and reality is far away. And since this energy is projected, if it's defined in your chart or if you're in a relationship with someone with this energy, you may have fantasy interactions or conversations with people in your heads and it can feel so real that there may be conflicts because of miscommunications because you perceived it that way even though it didn't actually happen. The Chinese hexagram that aligns with this gate is called decrease, which in many ways doesn't really seem to line up with the concept of the fantasy of the gate 41. And herein is the rub, as they say, because if your fantasy is to have everything as you envision it, yet the world shows you something different, how do you reconcile with that? 
There are few people who have never had a dream that didn't go even close to as planned. For more than a few of us, these dreams feel like a hunger that needs to be filled. And the concept that as soon as we get what we're looking for, we'll be happy is pretty common. And when things don't show up right away, or as we expect, we construct vision boards, we do affirmations or even mantras, all in the hopes that our dreams will manifest as we expect. And in our minds, we can see the world getting all the things that we've wanted, and then we want it even more. And soon, we can see every detail as it unfolds in our reality, yet time passes and our life doesn't really unfold exactly as we had expected. And when things don't show up as we planned, we become despondent and depressed, and we either push forward and continue on with the same dream, or we quit. Eventually, the time comes when you feel crushed by life, and you give up. But when we see this energy through a different lens, we can start to not only dream a new future, but we can also take steps to make that happen. Steps that it will have more success if we do it the right way. And how we make it happen is, as Richard Rudd, author of The Gene Key, says, is by holding our dreams with a loose grip. If there's anything that we can be certain about in life, it's that change is inevitable. And when it comes, there are people who refuse to budge, who refuse to divert their path. And there are also those who look at the change as an opportunity. What we know for certain is that adapting to change is the way of the least amount of pain. Because we hold on to the way things are or the way we want them to be, we might actually get our way for a certain period of time, but soon enough, change pushes us forward. And all we can do is shift with it. And the key word for this gate and many other gates of human design is surrender. This surrender is about releasing your grip on life and how things are supposed to be and instead pondering about how your dreams can be built when the landscape of life changes. And since this energy is found as far away from the throat as you can get, it means that there will probably be quite a bit of waiting before this energy sees the light of day. In other words, before this energy makes it to the throat also called the manifestation center in human design. And even if this energy does make it to the throat, since it's considered projected energy or energy that needs to be invited out of you, by waiting to be asked about what you envision means that what you have to say will more likely be seen in the best possible way instead of falling flat. And when you start using this energy instead of letting the energy use you, you'll begin walking along a path that is taking you closer to your dreams where illumination happens along the way. The insatiable hunger that drives you into deeper and deeper problems gives way and you let go of the single path to your dreams and instead accept fluidity in the path that will take you to where you want to go. And soon a new understanding will dawn and as you walk the path, the pieces of the puzzle of how to make your dreams become reality will slowly be revealed, but only as long as you are open to seeing things as they are rather than how you wish they were. And the more in tune you become to this energy, the more you might discover. And if you want, you can start to tap into the more mystical parts of the energy. The energy of the gate 41 is thought to be connected to the fairy and elemental kingdom and what people call Gaia or Mother Earth. In fact, being in nature can be a grounding force when you carry this energy. But whether you want to connect to other realms or not, the key to remember when you carry this energy is that nothing about the energy is meant to be spontaneous because there is potential for chaos if that happens, if you're pushing forward and you're not waiting. And when we remember that there's a fine line between being a dreamer and a visionary and that it's all in the timing, things that began as a dream can one day become a reality in your future. And instead of living in the dreams of your mind, you can instead live in the manifestation of your reality, where life may not be necessarily exactly as you fantasize, but it can still be pretty darn amazing all the same. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd love if you liked, shared, and subscribed. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you again soon.